Okay, this wants to be uh, a short video on how to find, you know, tips and tricks, how to find the notes on the on the fretboard in a way that you know what you're doing versus those things that I see a lot of uh, students at the beginning bring in, you know, this printouts of every note on the fretboard, like you're going to be able to <laughs> remember all those notes just by looking at, the, at that page. Um, no, you have to know, you know, you have to put them into practice and know how to find them. So we're going to put a little you know, a um, screenshot of what I mean on the side here. Um, so, you know, maybe maybe it's printed out just to see what things are, but don't use them, you know, use them in practice. So the idea is to learn, you have to memorize the chromatic scale. And with the chromatic scale, I mean this. Again, I'll, I'll put another um, uh, image of what I mean, but really on the guitar, let's say if we start on this note, which is the third fret of the A string, which is a C, you know, I'm just going to tell you right now, and I go up fret by fret. That's my chromatic scale. You know, on the guitar, a fret is the slowest, the smallest uh, distance between notes. You know, the half step. So, C, C sharp, D flat, D, D sharp, E flat, E, F. You know, in practice, there's no E sharp or F flat. There is in theory, but not in practice. So, you know, for now, this is just a practical video. F sharp, G flat, G, G sharp, A flat, A, A sharp, B flat, B, and we're back to C. After this, we know that we only have 12 sounds uh, in our Western tempered system. So these are all the sounds we have, okay? These are all the names of notes that we have. So a sharp obviously will be, for those that, that didn't know, uh, to raise a lower note a half step higher and a flat is to lower uh, the name you know the note the higher note half step lower so C if I move it up it goes to C sharp and D if I move it down it goes to D, it goes to D flat but you know technically it's the same sound it's called a harmonic an harmonic sound so an harmonic note so same sound different name so, um, okay, so how do we do this now? How do we go from this, just knowing the chromatic scale, to figuring out where all the notes are? So the first step is to do exactly what we've done, but start from every open string. You know, the, the, the guitar tuned to... So these are now a bunch of exercises that I will give you to, to memorize, you know, to just put this into practice. So we know that on the guitar, the... Uh, if I tune it in standard tuning, from let's go from the high E up, the name on the strings are E, B, G, D, A, and low E. So when I, you know, when I pluck the strings open, those are the notes that I produce, and that those are the name of the notes that I produce. So I'm going to do the same thing: E, F, because there is no half step between E and F. F sharp G flat. So I'm going to start naming all the notes up on the string. G, G sharp A flat, A, A sharp B flat, and so on. B, C. Um, again, do the same thing from the A string all the way to the 12th fret where the guitar then starts again. A, A sharp B flat, B, C, because again there's no half step between B and C. Um, C sharp, D flat, D, and so on. Same thing for the D string. D, D sharp, E flat, E, F, again. Okay. So you'll see that the notes start to be, um, they, they are in the same order down a string, but now when I see them in chunk of the guitar, they're all spread out. So, <clears throat> The same thing, let's do the same thing, but in position. So in position means instead of going down on a string, I want to be in a section of the neck, okay? So I can do the same thing. And first of all, let me just teach you the chromatic scale in position. It's really easy. You know, you start from any point of guitar, the guitar, and then I play one, two, three, four, and I slide with my four with my fourth fret. Then I go to the fret where I started from, and I do the same thing. A 
half part from between the G and the B string, where there's a minor third. The guitar is, is tuned in a, in a way where there's a smaller step between, there's a smaller interval between the G and the B string. So again, one, two, three, four, slide. So the only string where I'm not going to slide is the fifth, the sorry, the third string, the G string. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing. Let's say I'm going to start. <clears throat> I figure out that this note is a G. I'm going to do the same thing. G, G sharp, A. Let's just, just say, well, actually, I'm going to keep the sharps and flat. G, G sharp, A flat, A, A sharp, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D flat, D, D sharp, E flat, E, F, and so on. Um, do that starting from every finger of your left hand. That's another extra, that's a bonus tip. So let's say instead of always, let me just find a random place slightly higher. Let's say, make, let's make another example. I'm going to start from A sharp, B flat. And obviously I'm going to do this by calling the name of the, the notes. A sharp, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D flat, D. Okay. Next exercise, I'm going to start from my second finger. And for my third finger. You see that now the next note is going to be where my index finger should be. Obviously, I'm just showing you the you know the practical um, application. You'd have to do this by calling the name of the notes. Let's do an example from my little finger: B flat, A sharp, B. Then I play the next note. This is C because that's where my index finger was. You know, that's where my position starts. Remember that when you have your your uh, fingers in position. The index is where the position starts, even if I slide, and so on. So now we've done already quite a few things. So we've, you know, you you will have made quite a bit of practice. You know, you have practiced figuring out the chromatic scale on the open strings, figuring out the chromatic scale, uh, starting from some random notes on the guitar. Um, in position, and then from every, um, um, from starting the chromatic scale in position from every finger. Okay, so um, the next thing is obviously, you know, let me make a little parenthesis. You will already be using this stuff when you, uh, let's say, play bar chords, you know. In, you know, at the very beginning, you learn bar chords, and you know that the movable shape, uh, the, the this chord, this this is let's say an E major bar chord shape. The root is on the sixth string, and that's where you know the name of the chord will be. So let's say on the third fret, I will have found that this note here is the G, E, F, F sharp, G flat, G. So that's a practical application of how to find notes on uh, on a string. Okay, so anytime you have a movable shape, or you have a movable shape of a chord or a scale, you have to find the root. So you will have to find where the starting note is. So that's a practical application. That's how you you get better memorize the 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 notes because usually at the beginning I find that. Uh, Beginners tend to have a good knowledge of um, um, notes on this section of the guitar, the first position, and then it gets kind of cloudy, cloudy in the fourth, fifth, sixth uh, fret, and then there's a gap here in this section of the guitar. Then, obviously, because the guitar repeats, 
you know, on the 12th, 12th fret, there's a bit of knowledge here. And then there's a, there's a black hole in this section of the guitar. So, and the same thing, let's say people tend to know the, the name of the notes on the E and A string and maybe the high E string, but you know, the D and G are in use it as often in a practical way, meaning finding the root of a movable shape and stuff like that, a bar chord. So try to practice randomly. And this is the exercise that, uh, uh, that I'm gonna give you uh, to, to do that. Just find the random notes on the guitar, okay? And start to find all the other notes that have the same name. And you know that, you know, they could be, these are basically octaves for those that know what an octave is. But um, so try, let's say, I randomly picked that, the fifth fret on the A string. And first I'm gonna do it freely. And when I'm getting better at this, I am going to start using the metronome. So it's basically gonna force me to move at a pace. So let's say all my Ds on the guitar, because I know that that is a D. I found that A, in my first exercise, I found that A, A sharp, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, C sharp, B flat, and then D. So um, I'm gonna find all the Ds on the guitar. D is obviously an open string. There's another one here. There's another one here. I can also just pick different octaves for now. Octaves for now, we're just talking about the name of the note, not necessarily the octave. So, okay, so I've found a bunch of Ds, okay? And the more you do this, the better you become at finding. Obviously, this is gonna be a very slow process if you never have um, found um, notes on the guitar. But uh, the more you do this, the better you will become. And as I said, the most important thing is practical application, meaning uh, if you learn the pentatonic, you know, the classic pentatonic shape, one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four, the try to name the notes, try to name the notes and try to do that every time you learn something new. If you learn a chord, name the notes, name the individual notes, C, E, G, C, E, pentatonic, let's say B pentatonic, B, D, E, F sharp, A, and so on. So like name the notes of, you know, this is just purely to, to know the notes, where the notes are on the guitar. So, you, this will be very, very, very helpful when you learn tunes, when you want to, when you're given tunes in keys that you're not very uh, familiar with. So let's say you have to find a pentatonic in E flat. You know, where is E flat? Where is the root? Okay. Um, the next step, as I said, is to add a metronome. So let's say if you don't have a metronome, Google metronome, uh, go on Google, Google the word metronome and you will uh, I will come up with a metronome. Just put it at 50 BPM, which should sound like this. So I have the volume a bit. <clears throat> and do the same thing. Let's just pick F. And you find all the Fs and so on. And then you just push the tempo up when you become comfortable. Let's find another note. Let's find B flat. These are only my B flats on the guitar in random order and so on. Okay, so let's stop this. Yeah, so the more you do this, uh, the better you'll become. So again, chromatic scale down on a string, name the notes. Uh, well, first, memorize the chromatic scale. Second, chromatic scale down a string uh, by naming the notes. Chromatic scale in position by naming the notes. Chromatic scale in position from random fingers or from every finger, naming the notes. Um, practical use, 
every time you, you learn something on the guitar, name the notes, pentatonic scale, major scale, phrase, uh, movable shape, where you have to find the root, name the notes or chords. And then that octave exercise, find a note and find all the, the notes with the same uh, name on the guitar. And then the last exercise is uh, same thing, but with a metronome going from very slow to 50 BPM to, or even even slower than that, to um, uh, wherever you can get, really. Excellent, take care. Uh, subscribe and all that jazz.